hello everyone welcome back to my channel programming with the purpose this is the lesson three in the beginner series in which we are going to learn swift for ios development in lesson number one we have covered variable and constants as well as optionals in lesson number two we have covered strings and collections and in this lesson we are going to cover the control flow or the looping inside swift so here we are creating an array as we have as i've mentioned in lesson number two so it is an array which is a non-mutable array it contains countries such as pakistan australia nepal and egypt and here we are looping or basically iterating over all of these countries so we are going to use the keywords for and in for country in countries print whatever you want to do with the each of the entry inside your country's array after that we are going to iterate over a dictionary for that we are first creating a dictionary here i will be creating dictionary which will contain two strings key and value both as strings like pakistan india these will be the name of the countries and then their flags which is basically a unicode string that will be appended here and we are then going to iterate it using a tuple so here you can see that all of the flags are printed properly on line number 170 after that we are going to iterate over this dictionary using a tuple which is basically country comma flag and flags so we are going to print a statement that will contain both the country and the flag uh, key and value at each of the index inside this dictionary so this is with the control flow in a dictionary now we can also use numeric values to iterate over a certain range so here we are iterating from 1 to 5 and as you can see that it includes both the starting index and the ending index which is 1 and 5 now if you do not need the actual variable inside that iteration so we can just replace the index with an underscore and here we do not need it we just need to iterate over a number so that we can perform a certain action that many number of times so here we are basically multiplying five with itself with a certain number of times and printing it so here you can also use the half open range operator so here it is it will only be run twice so it will give us one two five after that i am going to show you how you can basically move over a range with a certain gap or you can skip certain numbers so it can be done using stride stride is basically gives you a starting point and an ending point and then you can hop over between these points over an interval so we are going to basically print the minutes over uh, an interval of 5 from 0 to 60 but you can see that the last value is 55 60 is not included if you want to include 60 you have to change this uh, call to stride and from the uh, two parameter you are going to change it to through once you are uh, you have changed it you will now print it and you will see that now 60 is included so the last or the ending index of the range is included in that way so now we are going to move to another type of loop which is basically while loop so here i am putting the comment so that we will be able to know that which of the loop is being discussed here in the playground file so while is basically uh, you have to do certain things while a certain condition is true so in the round brackets you are going to add the condition for which the while loop will run and you are going to perform all of the logic inside that parenthesis and then that uh, condition on the variable that is being applied inside while is updated inside the loop so here we have done the stride functionality that i've shown you with the for loop we have done it using a while loop from line number 202 to 206 now uh, repeat while is basically same as do while in certain languages so we are going to repeat a certain set of instructions while a certain condition is true so i have basically changed the above loop that i've written while for i'm going to change it to repeat while so how this is done i'm going to show you here so th this is how while repeat while is done
So let's start learning the conditional statements inside Swift. So first we are going to learn simple if else. It is quite simple to understand. We are going to use a certain variable for that. For example, we have set a variable temperature to 25. If temperature is less than or equal to 32, we are going to print a statement that it's cold outside. And this is the if statement, it's cold outside. So if you want to basically add an else to it so that otherwise if temperature is greater than 32 what it's going to print it's not that cold okay so this is the if else and then we can add further statements like else if inside this if else to add further conditions like if the temperature is greater than or equal to 86 it is going to print it's really warm so the, in this way we can basically create a certain intervals and give certain logic or basically line of code to each of the interval using if else statements. So this is how it's done inside Swift. So here we can assign this if else basically branching to our variable and we can use that variable to perform certain functionality. For example, I have removed all of the print statements and in each of the if else, the value of that string is basically assigned to our statement variable, uh, statement constant. And then we are going to print that constant inside a print statement on line number 240. So it is going to print, give us the exact same result. So basically this is the assignment of the if else control flow or if else conditional statements to our variable or our constant. Now we are moving to our switch statement. In switch statement, we are going to switch a variable value or a constant value, which is number in our case. And then we are going to write certain cases, which the keyword case is used after that. The value is used if it's a string or a character you want to match, you are going to basically enclose it into double quotes. And then you are going to perform whatever logic inside that case. And then a default should be provided. If default is not provided, then it will give you an error that the switch statement is not exhaustive. So you can see that number is greater than 2 is printed. What we can do is basically we can assign this switch statement to our constant message in the same manner that we have assigned it to uh, the, the if else is assigned to a variable. So here the message, the print statements are removed and whatever we are going to write the string is assigned to our uh, constant message. And here you can see that the message is printed. So number is greater than 2. Okay. So this is how assignment of a variable works in using switch statement. Now we can assign multiple values to each of the case with using a comma in between. So case can be 1 and 3 and we are going to print a certain line and case can be 2 and 9 and a certain string can be used for that. So you can also use ranges that can be uh, totally closed or half open. So here I'm using that if the range is 1 to less than 5, it is going to print that the number is less than 5. Otherwise, if it is less than 9, it is going to print numbers less than 9 and more than 5. Otherwise, a default string is basically assigned to our message constant. So the number is greater than 9 is printed. I'm going to change this string a little bit to accommodate 9 as well or equal to 9. Okay. So this is how switch statements work. Now switch statement, another power switch statement is basically you can use tuples as well for the comparison. So here we have a tuple that contains int comma int. So we can use basically the coordinate system and here we can print certain things. For example, if the case is 0, 0, the coordinates are 0, 0, we are going to print that the point is at origin. Otherwise, we are going to in case of whatever is on x and y is 0 it means that the point is on x axis and we are going to invert it with 0 comma underscore and the point is on y axis and then there is a default value which means that the point is between x and y axis it, it does not lie exactly on x axis or y axis or origin so in this way we, we can compare the tuples and print whatever lines we want to print Next, we are going to copy paste this switch statements and we are going to use the 
keyword where how it is going to help us in a switch statement case so we are going to check the case which can be like any x or y where x is equals to y so this is basically applying a condition on a tuple inside a case so the point is on the line x is equals to y now the case is where x is equals to minus y so we are going to print it x is equals to minus y and same is for minus x is equals to y so the point is on the line minus x is equals to y uh, you can also see that there is an issue with uh, white spaces around two variables so always place white spaces whenever you are comparing two variables in that way no error will occur in general if there is no space on the left hand side and you put a space on the right hand side of an assignment variable or a comparison operator it is going to give you an error so you have to keep the spaces proper on the both sides of the uh, operands so here you can see that there is a default statement added and where is giving us the exact answer so the point is on line minus x is equals to minus y here i'll be showing you how you can basically do the control transfer where you can change the routine loop path and here you can do it using a break statement so if i is equals to one you are going to print i otherwise the loop will start stop working and then it is going to basically continue with the continue statement i is equals to two will be skipped but the rest of the loop will continue as usual also there is a guard statement that will basically help us to guard against a certain condition so if a certain condition is true guard will not let the code to proceed from that point onward and it happens usually when we are dealing with the cells inside a table view and usually with arrays we can basically apply this condition of guard so here i am writing a function greet and if we have a certain value inside this person which is a name we are going to basically print its name otherwise we are just going to return so here the guard will print nothing if we are going to pass nil otherwise if the person value alice is passed it is going to return the name so this is all for the guard statement now we are going to move to the defer statement defer is basically going to perform certain lines of code only when the code will go out of the scope so here it is it does not print one but it is going to print six so this is all for lesson number three in the next lesson we are going to learn about functions and closures i hope you are enjoying this series and learning something from it stay tuned do not forget to subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching